Learning from someone who has already done what you want to do is one of the best ways to get where you want to go, but finding and keeping mentors can be a lot more difficult than it might sound. Between deciding who you want in your corner in the first place, coming up with a strategy for how to get in front of these people, and then making sure you're doing the right things to keep these relationships going over time, there are a lot of things to think about when trying to make this happen. So to help you with the process of first identifying the specific individuals that are going to be the most helpful in your career, and second, how to approach these people to build an actual sustainable mentor-mentee relationship that lasts, in this video, we'll talk through three ways to identify and build relationships with real estate industry mentors and some things that you'll want to avoid to be successful in this process. So step number one here is to identify the specific people that you want to build relationships with and directly along those lines. The first thing I'd recommend during this process is to proactively seek out the people who have done the specific things in the industry that you want to accomplish. There are a lot of different ways to become successful in commercial real estate, but each of these require different skill sets, different personality types, and almost always a very different career path overall. So if you're being mentored by someone whose industry experience is completely unrelated to the path that you want to take, this is probably not going to result in the outcome you were hoping for. For example, if you know that your long-term goal is to build your own property portfolio, you want to focus on the multifamily sector specifically, and you want to raise equity from investors to capitalize your deals, spending your time talking to rainmaker brokers or successful office developers that never raised capital usually isn't going to be a productive use of your time or theirs. A great way to gauge this is to look at someone's career and ask yourself, if I ended up with a similar career outcome, would I consider that a success? And if the answer is no, you should focus your efforts elsewhere. This makes sure that the advice that you're getting is applicable to your unique situation and that the conversations that you're having with your mentors can provide you with an inside look into the potential pitfalls, roadblocks, and hurdles that you might come across on the specific path that you're trying to pursue. Now, after you've identified the people that you want in your corner, step number two in this process is actually connecting with these individuals and building real relationships that ideally last over the long term. And with that, my second recommendation here is to always ask for mentorship in the most informal way possible, ideally without using the word mentor at all. If someone is successful in the real estate industry, it's very likely that they don't have much free time on their hands. And when a stranger comes out of nowhere and pops the, will you be my mentor question, the default response here is always going to be no. But instead of trying to give someone an undefined, indefinite, formal mentoring obligation, in my experience, the best way to start a real mentoring relationship is actually by asking someone for advice on only one specific decision that you currently have to make. Just by being clearer with your request, this can often increase your response rate substantially on cold outreach, and this also shows that you've already done your research and you've put yourself in a position to succeed on your own rather than just throwing out a lazy open-ended question that's essentially the equivalent of what should I do with my life. This gives the person you're reaching out to a very clear topic to weigh in on, and this can be as simple as writing an email or a LinkedIn message saying that you respect and admire this person's career path, you're looking to follow a similar path yourself, and you would love to hear their thoughts on a few career options that you're currently considering. And when you frame your outreach in this way, you'll end up getting much better answers to your questions, you'll get more specific advice on your unique situation, and you're also setting yourself up for future interactions with this person to follow up in a few months with an update on what you did. And this leads directly into my final recommendation in this video, which is, in my opinion, the most powerful thing you can do to build real relationships that last over the long term. And this is to actually follow through on the advice that you're given and then share the results of taking those actions. 
Now, this doesn't mean to blindly follow every direction you're given from every person you talk to, but for advice that actually resonates with you from people that you trust, this does mean putting the work in to implement those recommendations and then sharing your results with the people that made those suggestions. If you want to build a long-term relationship that can span many years throughout your career and you want an excuse to stay in touch and continue to ask questions over time, this is one of the best ways that I know of to make this happen and build real mentor-mentee relationships without ever saying those exact words. By asking someone to formally be your mentor, you're essentially asking for this person to lay out your entire career path for you, which almost always turns people off in a really big way. But if your initial outreach is the result of a specific question that you have, and then you follow up over time to share how you implemented that person's advice, this takes away the pressure of an indefinite long-term agreement and also shows this person your willingness to be coached and your ability to take action to achieve a desired result. And again, not only does this make your mentors more invested in your success, but this also allows them to see your work ethic, your level of discipline, and your commitment to your career, which can help them feel more comfortable making introductions on your behalf or recommending you for job opportunities that might come up in the future. Ultimately, for real estate professionals, having mentors in this industry is one of the best ways to get where you want to go in the most efficient way possible. In my experience, these are some of the most important things to keep in mind if you want to build real mentor relationships that are going to last over time. And if you want to learn more about the networking process and you want access to pre-built scripts for cold emails and LinkedIn messages to help you start these conversations, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking a CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, and you'll also get access to the Breaking a CRE Analyst Certification Exam, which covers topics like real estate pro forma and development modeling, commercial real estate lease modeling, equity waterfall modeling, and many other real estate financial analysis concepts that will help you prove to employers that you have what it takes to tackle the responsibility of an analyst or associate at a top real estate firm. And if you like this video and want to see more content on the channel on finding mentors, the networking process, or building relationships in commercial real estate in general, make sure to hit the like button and let me know. And let me know in the comments how you've gotten connected with your own industry mentors and how you've maintained these relationships over the long term. As always, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week. And I'll see you in the next video.